All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 24th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2023. Continuing on with Calvinism versus the Scripture. Today we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to point out the Calvinism you've probably heard if you're interested in this something called TULIP. It's, it's an acronym that stands for a T, it's T-U-L-I-P, total depravity. What they mean by total depravity is the absolute inability of a sinful human being to respond to God in any way. They are utterly dead to God, period. They can't, even if God calls them, they cannot respond. They must be regenerated, born again first by God before they can even hear him. Now, it seems to me that God had a conversation with Adam and Eve after they fell, and they seemed to be able to hear what he said. So you have all kinds of uh, cases with uh, basically everybody in the Old Testament is unregenerate because the New Covenant hasn't come into place. But we have people like David and others, Abraham, that uh, believed God. They weren't born again because that requires, the new birth requires the New Covenant, which did not come into force until after Jesus died and rose again from the dead. And then it was poured out, the promise of the Spirit, which is one of the promises of the New Covenant, was poured out at Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' death. Now, uh, so it's TULIP is the absolute inability of human beings, unregenerate human beings, un people that aren't born again, to respond to God at all. Even if God approaches them, God convicts them, they can't respond. They're dead. Dead, dead, dead. Second, the U, unconditional election. What that means is God decreed before the foundation of anything in his so-called eternal decree, which the Bible knows nothing about, that he will create some people for the purpose of salvation. He'll decree, he creates them, he causes them to sin, and then he causes them to be saved. Without regard to them at all. It's totally God operating on them. They're just targets. And then the other group is decreed. God decrees to create sinful people that will fall into sin, and he does not save, but rather for the for his own good pleasure and the glory of his justice, determines to damn them to hell. He creates them for the purpose of damning them to hell, as some kind of twisted idea of justice, because they had no other choice. They're, they're, see, human beings don't have any ability to obey or disobey obey God. It's just they're... Sinners can do nothing at all except disobey. They cannot respond to God at all. Does the Scripture teach that? There are some verses in Romans, uh, in chapters uh, 2, I believe, 2 or 3, that talks about, uh, Paul quotes from the, the Psalms, talking about there's, there's none that seeks for God. There's none that does good. They have all gone astray, that altogether become worthless. Well, that word there, 
the way that Paul translated it actually is there are no seekers after God. It doesn't refer to a person can't seek God or can't be uh, um, awakened to the point that they'll do, or they, they, might not, they might seek God occasionally. They might be, have an interest in God occasionally, but it's not a characteristic of them. It's a present participle thing again. Uh, so it's not there's there are no people who are uh, devoted to seeking God or devoted to doing good. It doesn't mean they can't ever do it or they can't ever uh, do something that is not completely evil. But that see Calvinists don't believe that. So so God simply by His decree be, uh, before He created anybody determined all things, all things exhaustively. So, of course, it's unconditional election. There are no conditions. Uh, faith is not a condition of salvation for Calvinists. Whether God chose to create you for salvation or create you, decree you, elect you, whatever, decree you for salvation or for damnation is strictly arbitrary, completely arbitrary. That's what unconditional election is. It is the, all these things come out of the the rotten core of the apple that is the eternal decree of all things, which goes back to Aristotle's idea of perfection. Pagan. It comes from paganism through Augustine and Thomas Aquinas and others. Now, the middle one is limited atonement. L. God, Christ only died... For those God decreed to save. Now, only Calvinist or Calvinistic type people, primitive Baptists come in here too, believe in limited atonement. The vast majority of Christians have always believed in a universal atonement, and the vast majority today, whether they're Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, Lutherans, Methodists, they all believe in a universal atonement. Christ died for the sins of the whole world, for all people. Because the strict scripture plainly states that, as we have seen in the previous videos. So Calvinism, though they say the scripture is the highest authority, actually their theology is higher than the scripture. Just like Rome, tradition is higher than the Bible, even though they say it's equal. Roman uh, um, Calvinists make a lot of noise about the authority of Scripture, but they don't actually believe it. Their theology is what determines how they read the Bible and what they believe in the Bible and what they don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe when the Scripture says that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. They spin that to say something that conforms to their theology. So they don't believe that Christ died for everyone. Now, if Christ... If God truly desires all people to be saved, and they're not saved, then it's not because of his eternal decree. It's because of them. Them not believing the gospel. That's a completely different thing. See, if God truly desires to save everyone, then of course died Christ died for the sins of the whole world. You had to. Because God desired to save everyone. So he, God atoned for the sins of the whole world. And there's a condition. The condition is you believe in Christ. <clears throat> so, uh, and, and then, uh, see, uh, irresistible grace. Well, Ro um, keep one and call them Roman Catholics. Calvinists believe that the eternal decree, the God's decree of all things, is grace. His simple decree that, well, this person's going to hell and that person's going to heaven because that's what I want. I want some people to go to heaven and some people to go to, go to hell. I don't want them all to be saved. I want most of them to go to hell to demonstrate my justice. 
because they sin against me because I decree them to sin. Therefore, they're guilty. Therefore, I'm going to justly punish for them for sins that I caused them to do. Isn't that a little bit uh, strange? I think so. I think so. Uh, you have to be under the spell of Calvin to believe this garbage. <clears throat> but it's not limited to Calvin. There was others before, like Augustine. Augustine is one of the great corruptors of Christianity. And then there's Thomas Aquinas and many others. that They mixed pagan philosophy with Christianity. And they came up with something that's not Christianity. Not really. It's not New Testament Christianity. So you have irresistible grace, which is simply the arbitrary choice of God to do certain things and not do other things. That's not grace at all. Grace has to do with God's law, for God so loved the world. God is doing good for us that don't deserve any good. Like sending his son to die on the cross for the sins of the entire world. That's God's grace. And then lastly, there's a perseverance of the saints. Which means that God keeps those who trust in Jesus and doesn't allow... Um, will bring them to salvation, will keep them in the faith. Now, the depravity of human beings, if you mean by total depravity, the T, that all people are sinners and sin has affected all of their being, body, soul, and spirit, uh, the way you, uh, they're in Adam, uh, you know, if it's defined properly, there's no problem there. Perseverance of the saints. There's really no problem there either. It's, as some said, the uli in the middle, the unconditional election, limited atonement, and uh, irresistible grace that are utterly unbiblical. And contrary to Scripture. Contrary to Scripture. Of course the Holy Spirit can be resisted. Scripture says so. Paul says, you're always, or who was it? Uh, Stephen, I think, was uh, said, you're always resisting the Holy Spirit. The writer of Hebrews warns us, today, if you hear his voice, if you hear the voice of God drawing you to Christ, to faith, do not harden your heart. So obviously we can resist the Holy Spirit. If you believe Scripture instead of a system of doctrine that is contrary to Scripture. Who is the liar that opposes God and his word? Satan. These doctrines of what is called Calvinism, the, the core doctrines that make Calvinism distinct from everything else, are satanic. They are the doctrines of demons. That's the only conclusion you can come to if you believe the Bible. So let's go to Second Peter 3.9 and take a look at that verse. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, not slow, as some count slackness, but long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Now, Calvinists will say, well, th this is the elect. This is the elect. Well, why should we believe that? It doesn't say that. They read their theology into the Bible. That's called eisegesis. That's not exegesis, where you take what the Bible teaches and you draw the teaching out and teach what the Bible teaches. No, they take their theology and they impose it on the Scripture and twist the Scripture to fit their theology, just like all the cults do. So what I want to look at so here talking about limited atonement particularly. He is not willing that any should perish. That is why the atonement is universal. God wants all to be saved. He wants all to come to repentance, just as we saw in 1 Timothy 2, 4. God wants all men to be saved. The reason they're not isn't because of God's desire that some not be saved, but because of man's refusal to believe the revelation God has given them, including the revelation in, in uh, creation, which isn't enough to save you, but the revelation of creation uh, 
clearly displays that God exists and that he's, he's, uh, his power and his deity. But the resurrection is the proof that God has given to all humanity that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah, and he is true. Now, atheists, for example, simply will not accept the word of God. They will not accept the proof God has given. They are unwilling to actually investigate it and judge it the same way they would judge other uh areas. Investigate the facts and make a decision based on the evidence. They won't do it. Because they're, they, they, hate, they just despise the idea. They don't want God to exist. So here we have this, and some people will twist this, Calvinists will twist this, to, to deny this. They'll say, well, all doesn't mean all, like they do in 1 Timothy 2, 4. But as I've demonstrated, the Greek is absolutely emphatic. It does mean all men. Not all kinds of men there, but all men. There's no doubt about the Greek. So if a Calvinist tries to pull one over on you, don't let them do it. Go back and look at that video. And Here we have, first of all, we have this phrase, not wishing any to perish, but all to come to repentance. This is an intensified phrase where he said, God doesn't want this, but rather, that's the intensification there, the but there is the adversarial. So not this, but this. It's not a simple but, it's an intense but. <laughs> Allah rather than uh, the, the normal case there. So here, he is not desiring... This is an ongoing thing, too. This is not an eternal decree. This is, he is not desiring. He is still not desiring. This is a characteristic of God. He doesn't desire people to be lost. He doesn't want you to perish. That's the God of the Bible. That is not the God of Calvinism. Calvinism denies that. They say God created people for the very purpose, most people for the purpose of them being lost. Calvinism teaches that. Don't buy the lie, as I did for a couple of years, which I find shocking that I was deceived by something that's so glaringly unbiblical. I don't want you to be deceived like I was. It does bad things to you, too. It, your heart will become hardened. If you're born again and you believe in, start believing in Calvinism, it will start to corrupt you. It will corrupt your heart because it's a lie from Satan. You've taken Satan's ideas, Satan's doctrines, into your mind, and it will begin to corrupt you. Your attitudes will become corrupt. Stay away from it. Or repent of it. So he's God is not wishing, not willing, that any perish. It's not God's desire. But that, but instead, all come to repentance. All come to that change in mind, changing their mind about God, changing their mind about sin, changing their mind about their own goodness and acceptance before God, self righteousness repenting of their self-righteousness, and rather changing their mind from the way that they've been living and what they have been believing and how they have been living and turning it toward God, a change in mind. That's what the word repentance means. Metanoia literally means a change of mind. So here we have not wishing that any should perish, but all, all, all. So the any and all refer to all human beings. Here is the all in the form of... There it is. But all into repentance. To come, come right there, into repentance. Eis metanoian. 
but all pontos without a noun in the plural without a definite article means all every single person it doesn't mean all kinds it means all period don't let somebody try to pull the wool over your eyes uh, using Greek language knowing that you don't know it they they had fooled me they had fooled me until the Holy Spirit pointed something out that they didn't point out I don't know if they were just that person was just blind to it or deliberately was deceiving people I don't know God knows so here again in 2 Peter 3 9 we have an express statement by the Apostle Peter that God does not want anyone to perish but all come to repentance all come to faith in Christ repenting of unbelief and embracing belief in Jesus Christ because you're not you're not saved by putting away your sin that's self-righteousness that's that is a false doctrine of Satan too that repentance means putting away your sin a sinner can't put away their sin any more than a a, a leopard can change its spots you were born a slave of sin God has to set you free but you have to believe the gospel you have to change from on repent of your unbelief to believing God believing and trusting in Christ and what he did for us on the cross so we have the test the clear testimony of the Apostle Paul that God desires all people to be saved we have the clear testimony of the Apostle John that he God wants all people to be saved and we have the clear and explicit testimony of the Apostle Peter that God wants all people to be saved so if you reject that and choose rather to believe Augustine and Calvin and even Luther although Lutheranism doesn't believe these things that Luther believed so if, if, if you want to believe those people rather than God's explicit testimony through his the, probably his three most apostle uh, most important apostles as far as the scriptures Peter and John and the Apostle Paul if you would rather believe those dead men rather than the Lord's Apostles who knew Christ who saw the risen Christ who wrote the vast majority of the New Testament well I guess you just haven't repented of your unbelief you've chosen to believe the lies of Satan rather than the gospel of Jesus Christ see Calvinism is not the gospel Many people have been deceived in thinking it is. It is not. You look in the Bible to find out the Word of God, especially the New Testament. You don't go looking in the Law of Moses. You don't go looking in the Proverbs. You look in the New Testament to find out about Jesus Christ and what he did for us. Do not be deceived. I don't want you to be deceived. That is not my purpose. For I too agree with the apostles and the Lord Jesus that God is not willing that any should perish I don't want anybody to perish God forgive me if I ever do but that all should reach should come to repentance I hope you do too if you do not know Christ and I hope you repent of your 